Okay, in this video I'm going to look at some more places in scripture that might be referring to the warning of Garabandal. In a previous video I looked at the sixth seal of the book of Revelation and looked at the main arguments in favour of seeing the sixth seal or the opening of the sixth seal as uh, the warning in sacred scripture. And now I'm going to look at some other texts. These are not so highly regarded as the one about uh, the sixth seal, but they are used on some popular warning websites. And in particular, I'm going to be looking at this picture, this website that is now on our screen. And we can see um, on the right hand side, Revelation 6, 12 to 17. That's the one about the sixth seal, which I looked at on a previous video. Now, I thought we would just look at these three remaining prophecies of the warning and consider them together. The first one, Luke 23, 29 to 30. For behold, the day shall come wherein they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that have not borne and the paps that have not given suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall upon us and to the hills, cover us. So anyone that watched the previous video will realize that this sounds really similar to the to the scripture from Revelation 6. That's really interesting, isn't it? That there's some overlap there in that in this scripture, we also hear of individuals calling on the mountains to fall on us, the hills to cover us. I wonder whether this scripture is taking as a prophecy of the warning solely because of its similarity to the other piece of scripture, to the revelation piece. Because really, there's actually nothing in this text here that speaks of the illumination of conscience. Nothing about God revealing to the individuals the state of their souls. It could be about the second coming. It could be about the great chastisement. It could be about, um, well, on an obvious sense, it's about, it can be about the fall of Jerusalem, the Roman sacking of Jerusalem. So there's no, I don't think there's anything here that immediately speaks to us of the warning. The next one now, Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a testimony to all nations, and then shall the consummation come. Again, I'm not sure how that is referring to the warning. Maybe it's suggesting that the word consummation really means warning. But most likely the word consummation means finish, end, end of the world, the return of Christ, the judgment, the second coming. I don't see why this has to be about the warning. Is it, is it actually, does some people think that the gospel of the kingdom being preached to the whole world for a testimony of all, na to all nations? That's interesting. Maybe that the, the experience of the warning is the preaching of the gospel to the entire world. But actually, the people on countdown to the kingdom certainly don't take that view. Their understanding is, and also this is really the understanding of, of Conchita, that the warning isn't about conveying information as such. Um, it's not about teaching of doctrine. It's about revealing the state of the individual soul to that individual. So I don't think that the warning can be compared to the preaching of the gospel to the whole world, if that's the reason that this scripture is taken as referring to the warning. Now, finally, looking at this, this last one here, Ezekiel 36, 31 to 32. And you shall remember your wicked ways and your doings that were not good and your iniquities and your wicked deeds shall displease you. For it, it is not for your sakes that I will do this. And you shall remember your wicked ways and your doings that were not good and your iniquities and your wicked deeds shall despise you. It is not for your sakes that I will do this, says the Lord God. Be it known to you, being confounded and ashamed at your own ways, O house of Israel. I think of all the texts, including the sixth seal, this is the one I find most uh, enigmatic. 
and the the one that perhaps to me speaks the most of the warning. And probably I need to consider this text in greater depth because it certainly is a text that is not about the second coming or even about the first coming. Um, it's speaking about individuals coming to realize the evil of their acts seeing things from God's point of view, a moment of being confounded, being ashamed at your own ways. I think that is a bit like the experience of the warning. Is there anything in this text that makes me think that it isn't about the warning? Maybe there's the fact that it's only referring to wicked ways and some seers have suggested that actually the warning, the illumination of conscience will be a pleasant experience for those who are in the state of grace or or at least for those who are uh, holy. Um, and this text only considers iniquities being called to mind. That's one consideration. The other is that it's only referring to the house of Israel. God is speaking to the house of Israel, whereas the warning is for the whole of humanity. And and normally in sacred scripture, Israel or, or references to the house of Israel, they apply to the church um, eschatol- eschatologically, or they apply to the church when they're taken as, as prophetic beyond the Old Testament. But the warning is for the whole of humanity. So it makes me wonder if this scripture were about the warning Surely it would have it would have said, oh, oh, all the nations or something rather than just addressed to the house of Israel. But maybe you could argue that the house of Israel, that is the church and members of the church, will be particularly ashamed and confounded as a result of the warning. And so far as they were members of the true religion and they had the um, truth of the faith before their mind and they didn't live by it. So maybe this text is about the warning. As I said, of all the texts that we've looked at, I think this is the most convincing about the warning. And so may Almighty God bless you and Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.